now we need to see what is the actual meaning the practical meaning of hcf and gcd so where do we find hcf or gcd in our real life or where do we find its application so let's take the example if large square beds square is a very important word over here if large square beds are made for planting vegetables on a plot of land 18 meters long and 15 meters wide what is the maximum possible length of each bed so over here we are asked to find the maximum possible the maximum is the highest the greatest number that is possible of having the square of that dimension so let us understand this in very simple words so we have a field which is a rectangle and it's a plot for planting vegetables and it is 18 meters long and it is 15 meters wide the breadth is 15 meters and we need to make square beds we need to make small small square beds like this all of them should be a perfect square the length and the breadth should be equal so the question is what is the maximum possible length of each bed which is a square okay so of course one of the answers to this question could be uh, my each bed is of one meter so the square is one meter by one meter so in this way i'll be having 18 such squares over here because every square is one meter long and one meter wide and i'll be having 15 such beds over here okay 15 such beds of course this is a very rough diagram because all the squares are one by one but is there any other possible answer and is a square bigger than one by one possible for example two by two or five by five possible which can be made in this particular plot and the answer to this question is yes it is possible it is the hcf of 18 and 15. so if you first find the hcf of 18 and 15 the prime factorization of 18 is um, 2 multiplied by 3 2 3 are 6 6 3 are 18 and the prime factorization of um, 15 is 3 and 5 and if you see what is common in both the numbers it is 3 common and and nothing else is common so it means in other words that a 3 by 3 square a 3 by 3 square a square having 3 meters length and 3 meters breadth is possible so we'll have one two three four five and six squares and we'll have one two three four five squares in the breadth direction and this is the maximum possible dimension of each bed and that is three by three which is possible so that we have perfect square beds in this garden Another application of HCF or GCD is to reduce the fraction which we are going to learn in the later part of the course. But knowingly or unknowingly we use the HCF to find what is the lowest possible uh, form of 48 by 108. So what are we going to do is we are going to find out the HCF of 48 and HCF of 108. So let us factorize 48. So 48 goes in the table of 2, 2 2's are 2 4's are, then 2 1's are 2 2's are, 2 6's are, 2 3's are, and 3 1's are. So we have 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3. And what about 108? Let us do 108 also. So the prime factors of 108 are 2, 2 5s are 10, 
two fours are eight. Two twos are four. Two sevens are fourteen. Three nines are three. Threes are three ones are. So we have two multiply by two multiply by three multiply by three multiply by three. And if you look, two is common. Another two is common. Then we have a three common. So the HCF or the GCD is two multiply by two multiply by three, and that happens to be twelve. So both these numbers, forty-eight and hundred and eight, can be divided by twelve, and twelve is the biggest possible such number where the division gives a proper answer. And forty-eight divided by twelve is four, while 108, 4, you can see from here also. And 108 divided by 12 is 9. So we can say that 48 upon 108 is the same as 4 upon 9. And 4 and 9 are now co-prime numbers and they cannot be further divided. So we use the HCF of these numbers and we divide them and we get the smallest possible fraction. And let's see another example. The number of students from 6th grade and 7th grade are going for a site visit are 40 and 56 respectively. Means there are 40 students from the 6th standard and 56 students from the 7th standard. The students of each grade are to be divided into groups of equal number of students. So both these uh, students from both these standards are to be divided in equal groups. Each group will be assigned a guide. What is the maximum number of students in each group? Explain its benefit. So we have two classes and we have grade 6 and grade 7 and there are 40 students in 6th grade and there are 56 students in 7th grades, seventh grade. And we need to divide these 40 students amongst themselves and these 56 students among themselves in groups, small groups, big groups, but in such a way that the number of students in both the groups are equal. So one possible uh, solution to this could be we are going to divide in a groups of 10, 10 students, 10 students, 10 students, and 10 students. So there are four groups of 10 students, that is 40. But we cannot divide this in 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, 50, but the last will be 6. So we need these numbers to be equal and we want all the groups to be of equal length. So what is the possible answer? Of course, we can divide this into 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 10 times and we can divide them as um, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 20 times. So what is the answer? The answer to this is it is the HCF of 40 and 56. And let us um, solve this by another method. 40 and 56 let's take away the smaller number 40 and we have 16 we bring down the 40 as it is and now take away 16 from 40 and bring down the 16 as it is and we have 4 and 2 24 and then take down the 16 take away 16 from 24 and we have 8 and bring down the 16 as it is take away 8 from 16 and we have 8, bring down the 8 as it is, and therefore the HCF of 40 and 56 is 8. So the answer is, we're going to divide the students in groups of 8. So we have this 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. 8 fives are is 40. And 8 ones are 8, 8 twos are 16, 8 threes are 24, 8 fours are 32, 8 fives are 40. 8 6 are 48, 8 7 are 56. So we have 8 students in each group, both in the 6th grade and the 7th grade. And 
we are going to assign a guide to each of them so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 we have 12 such groups and each group have equal number of students if we had taken lesser number than 8 let's say if we had taken 4 then we would have doubled the groups and then we have assigned a guide to each group and therefore the cost of getting so many guides will be even much more higher so the benefit of finding the HCF is we have equal number of students in each group and the number of students in each group is the highest. So this is one of the applications of finding the HCF. Thank you for watching.